Please welcome Kayvon. All right. You guys are a great crowd. I'm excited to be here because I don't know if you know this or not, but for the last few years, comedians were labeled non-essential <laughs> by a bunch of politicians. I was thinking the same thing about them the whole time. Not you, Governor. Not you, of course. Uh, it was really tough being labeled non-essential because I found out how low comedians are considered on that list. My buddy's a hairstylist. He was labeled non-essential. I said, let's hang out. He said, I can't. I'm busy. I said, how are you busy? We're both non-essential. He goes, women are getting illegal haircuts. <laughs> Look at all these women. These are lawbreakers. And they were enticing him to do it. He didn't want to. They're like, please, I won't tell anyone. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> I was so jealous. None of you ladies called me up. I was available. <laughs> You'd be like, can you please come make me laugh? I won't tell anybody. Just say, knock, knock. I'll say, who's there? <laughs> didn't happen. So I lowered my standards a little bit. I've been flying a lot of low-budget airlines lately. Anyone ever flown the low-budget airlines? Have you? Yeah. For those of you who haven't, lower your standards a little bit, okay? Stop being annoyed with them. The flight was $19. What did you expect for $19, okay? They're gonna get you there eventually. That's the promise. When you sit down, it's gonna be different. The way you sit, that's how you're gonna be the whole flight. It doesn't recline. Armrest, they don't have them. You get a little nub of metal, you put your elbow in it. That's how you're gonna sit the whole time. You're gonna sit like this. So do a short flight, Seattle to Portland. You know, go from LA to Burbank. Don't fly from Los Angeles all the way to Florida. When you get off the plane, you're gonna look like everybody else in Florida. <laughs> you go straight to Boca Raton, that's what you do. Those are not old people, they flew a low budget airline. The next thing you gotta look out for is the flight attendant. Stop messing with the flight attendants, they don't play. Most flight attendants come from the Flight Attendant Training Academy. These people come from the prison to work release program. I walked on the plane once, the flight attendant was already yelling at this poor guy. She was just in his face, say it again, say it again, watch what happens, I wish you would. And she was talking to the pilot. I just got on the plane and said, please don't say it again, we gotta go, sir, let's just. And by the way, I don't think comedians are non-essential because we can tackle tough topics and we have solutions, nobody ever asks us. I got solutions. Right now, we have a situation where there's men swimming against women in college sports. Now. I want to ask the crowd right now, how many people think there should be men's sports for men? Hmm? Women's sports for women, what do you think? And then we can have a little compromise. We can have a new category for the new category. I already picked out a name, the X-Men. It's either that or the Transformers, but we gotta pick out a name. I have solutions. Some people talk about diversity. Every company should have diversity. I know one company, almost no diversity. The NBA. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, how do we get more minorities in the NBA? I'm talking about Latinos, Asians, Middle Eastern people. I figured out how. We could raise or lower the backboard depending which ethnicity is running to it towards the game. <laughs> the band knows what I'm talking about. See right there? We know LeBron is very good. Not 10 feet, it needs to be 13 feet for LeBron. But if a white guy's coming, nine feet. Give us a little help. Asian? And if you're thinking, what about Latinos? Make it fence high, they'll get over it. Now I'm looking around, some people don't wanna laugh at that joke. I can assure you Mexicans love that joke, okay? I did it in Arizona, this guy came up after, he goes, that joke was hilarious, bro. But you're stupid, I would go under the court. <laughs> Here's one we gotta watch out for. Have you noticed there's a thing called the gender pay gap? And it goes both ways, no one's ever talking about it. There are some careers where men make less money than women. Yeah, it happens, I looked it up, the ballet. <laughs> Male ballerinas, nobody's talking about it other than me, I'm here for you because those guys are suffering in silence. They're doing the same moves as everybody else, and they're getting half the pay. And I've been to the Nutcracker, but they're experiencing it. It's a tough, it's a, it's a tough thing, man.
And another thing, when I do these corporate events, these private events, and I love when you invite me out, I'll come do yours, but just don't get so sensitive about comedy. We're just joking. I had one lady, she was like, please don't talk about politics, okay? I don't talk about politics. I make fun of Joe Biden. <laughs> it's different. It's, it's, it's different because I don't make fun of his politics. I make fun of how much he falls down. That's not political, that's gravitational. He does, he has fallen while running, he's fallen while riding a bike. If he falls in the water, that's a triathlon. <laughs> and I tease Trump too, but I miss him. I miss Trump, because those press conferences were amazing. Can we agree the press conferences were amazing? The press conferences were fire, because you never knew what he was gonna say. Because he never knew what he was gonna say. You know what Biden's gonna say, it's on the teleprompter. He can't read it, but it's right there. <laughs> Trump speaks right to us from his heart. He does it at a third grade level so everybody can understand at the same time. And I really liked it. Like, remember the Chinese spy balloon? It left China and it came here and Joe Biden didn't find out about it until it was over Montana. By the time he got down to the situation room, they shot it down over South Carolina. That would have never happened under Trump. As soon as the balloon left Beijing, he'd be awake, three in the morning. He'd be, What's happening? A balloon? I'm gonna tell the people, bring the cameras, bring the fake news, get in here. I've just been told there's a great big balloon coming from China, folks. This is not a regular balloon, it's not a birthday balloon. A Chinese spy balloon. Horrible. One of the biggest balloons you've ever seen. Absolutely huge. It's absolutely fantastic, this balloon. We have very weak leaders. They're not popping the balloon. I would have already popped it by now. You put me up there, I'll pop the balloon. If we don't pop these Chinese spy balloons, next Mexico will send a spy piñata like you've never seen before, believe me. <laughs> you guys have been amazing. I've been Kate on. Thank you. Oh my God. Fantastic. Hey, I know you want to see more of Kayvon. I certainly do. If you want to see his tour dates, dry bar comedy specials, and his movie, Funny Thing About Love, and if you want to get this brand new book called Once You Go Everywhere, go to Huckabee.tv. We will connect you. You can bring him to your community, your organization, and you'll have as much fun as we've had here tonight. And we've had some fun here with Kayvon tonight. <laughs>